All right, welcome back to another video. I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I'm finally going to be doing it. I'm going to be setting up my Tmux config from scratch, including some workflows to work smoothly with the NeoRim. I still think Tmux is still a really great way to move around your terminal panes and being really productive when programming. I'll also tell you why I don't use Zelich, so let's get started. Okay, so if you take a look at my Tmux directory, my Tmux is located inside my home directory in my .config folder. For you, your tmux might actually just be in the home directory, so it depends on your path. And if we go inside the tmux directory, we'll see that I have a .tmux directory that holds all the plugins, which I'm going to add later on. And then we have the .tmux config, of course, and this is where our config is going to stay at. So let's open that up. Before we do anything here, let's just actually open up tmux first. So if we get out of here and go into tmux attach, so this is basically how the default tmux looks and as you can see it doesn't look that good at all so we're definitely going to change it up a bit but let's just get started by setting up the configurations first so let's go into the dot tmux conf we're going to set the true color support This should set the default terminal color to use this. If our terminal supports this, it's going to be totally fine. But we're also going to set another one just in case the terminal doesn't support the Xterm256 color but the 24-bit color instead. So we're just going to do this just in case. Now the next thing you might notice is that we currently have our first window as zero so we don't actually want this because like it doesn't actually make any sense we're gonna do set dash g and then go base index one so that should just do it so we're gonna save that and we're also gonna set for split panes to do the exact same thing so we're just gonna do set g pane dash base index one we're gonna save this and then we're just gonna quit and then we're gonna do tmux kill server and then we're going to go back in by doing tmux new server and you should now see our first window is exactly one so by default the prefix key should be control b so if we do control b and then go c we actually create a new window now we can go back to window one with prefix b and then one but at the end of the day i'm still going to go back into my config and now we're going to set up the prefix in here as well just to be clear so we're gonna do set option and then go g prefix control b some people might go control s some people might go control a but for me i just don't feel like that makes any sense because control s still requires you to use only one hand to do two movements and then go and press the number of tabs that you want to go to but for me it's better to just press control with my left hand and then b with my right hand and then use my left hand to select the tabs that I want to go to. And then we're also going to set the prefix 2 to none. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm just going to do it just in case. Now the next thing we're going to set up is the splitting panes. So I don't like the default keybinds for splitting panes, so I'm just going to unbind that first. So unbind percent. And then we're going to bind it to a new one. Split window. And then we're going to do the one for vertical split as well. Actually, I should have done this first, but we're going to set the reload tmux configuration with R. What this does is just allows us to reload or basically source this whole buffer again so that we don't have to always quit tmux. But sometimes it doesn't really work, so uh, it works in some cases. But yeah, let me just do that really quickly and write down that path. Now, the next thing we want to set up is the copy mode, the copy and selection mode. So to go into copy mode, I'm actually just going to make mine as a V. So we're going to unbind V just in case. And then we're going to do bind V copy mode. And we're going to save that. Let me just do prefix R to reload now. And then we're going to quit out of this. And now what it allows me to do is I can just do control B and then press V. And then this should allow me to go into copy mode. As you can see on the top right, 
but currently I'm not able to do anything in the copy mode because I haven't actually set up the support for that. So nothing works yet, but we'll fix that. The next thing I want to set up is paint resizing. So U just stands for basically up, down, and then uh, right, and then left. So this allows us to just resize our pane using H, J, K, and L. I'll show you in a bit here. And the other thing we also need to do is maximizing our panes. So dash R, M, and then resize pane. Okay, that should do it. So let me just save, reload this config. Okay, so to try this out, I'm going to create a split pane. And I think I made a slight mistake here. This should be a dash. So now let's save and prefix reload. Let's see if this works. Prefix and then split. Okay, and then prefix and then H. And now we can move it five times until it stops. So you can set it to six or seven depending on how you want to do it. So yeah, that, that works. And then prefix M should also maximize. Okay, prefix M again. Okay, we're good. Now let's add some mouse support. And then we're also going to add the Vim copy mode navigation. Uh, this is what I usually have. And then I'm also going to bind a key for this. So we're now going to save that and then reload this and see if this actually works now. So we're going to quit out of this and control B, V, and we should be able to just move around now. V to do a selection. The next thing we're going to add is the session management. Let's try and do that now. So this will run the show command at this path. So I have a scripts folder. And this links to tmux sessionizer which if you use tmux you probably know what this does by now but if you don't don't worry i'll explain to you and then also we're going to add another one this just essentially allows us to create a new session when we do Control b and then n so let me save this and show you really quickly so what i can do now is go Control b and then n and it will ask me if i want to create a new session if i do then i can just start typing a new name so we can say test enter and now we're in a new session. So if we do control B S again, we can go back to our main session. So that's what this line does. And then for this one, it just runs a Tmux sessionizer script. So what this script essentially does is it will open a new session with your directory that you have in your system. So for example, if I do control V F, so whatever directory I want to open and then enter. So it just opens me into that directory in a new session. If you're curious about the script, I'm not the first one to do this. So of course you can go and mess around with this and add your own path over here just to make sure that you have what you want. We're also going to add some mouse drag behavior. So this should just allow us to drag our mouse to select a copy when we go into copy mode. So let's try it out. Okay. So if we try to drag to copy, okay, it works. If you're like me and always looking for ways to improve, learn new skills, and make challenging things easier, then you need to check out Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an incredible online learning community with thousands of classes taught by industry experts. Whether you're looking to level up your career, hobbies, creative skills, or maybe even some productivity hacks, Skillshare has something for you. Whether it be illustration, design, filmmaking, freelancing, there's no shortage of opportunities to grow and turn knowledge into action. It's all in one place, designed for learners at any stage. From completing project milestones, earning badges and certificates. And when it comes to productivity, you all know how much importance I give to it. Luckily, there are so many lessons on productivity, like this Mastering Productivity class that I'm currently halfway through. Also, a learning path which brings all relevant lessons into one, because I truly want to find the productivity system that works for me, as you might want to find for you. And here's the best part. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So don't wait, click the link, start exploring and take your skills to the next level today. 
Now we are going to start adding the plugins to our Tmux. So the first one we're going to add is obviously the Tmux plugin manager, so TPM. So we're going to use this to manage all our plugins. But in order to do that properly, I'm going to set the path for where my TPM is going to install all the other plugins for Tmux. So our Tmux plugin manager will be responsible for that now. We can then install TPM using this line. And then at the end of the file, don't forget to add the run path for where your TPM is being installed. Once we've done that, we can now go ahead and save this. Now to install the plugin, we can do prefix for me, which is control B and then capital I. So that should be okay now. The next plugin we're going to install is the Vim Tmux Navigator. Because we are using TPM, make sure you have the Vim Tmux Navigator installed as a plugin inside your NeoVim as well in order for this to work properly. Now, why do you actually need this plugin? So when we do a normal split here and we try to move between left and right panes, on the left, we have NeoVim open. On the right, we have Tmux split open. So how do we navigate between these two split? With Vim Tmux Navigator, we would just be able to use Control H, just like that, to jump here, and Control L to jump back here. If we do Control B and then split down, we can also move up with Control K and Control J. So now basically, we can move between these panes very easily. So let's say I'm in my NeoVim editor and I'm just doing something and I just want to run some commands in my shell. I can quickly just jump back out here and do that. There are a couple more plugins I want to add, so I'm just going to paste them all here. And let's go through it together. If you're installing plugins for the first time, what I would recommend you do is just add all the plugins at once. And then what you want to do, right, is just save it and then Control B, capital I, one time to just reload this whole thing. And to make sure all these plugins are installed, we're actually just going to quit out of here and kill the Tmux session. I mean, kill the Tmux server. That just makes sure that you clean everything up and restart it all again. Because sometimes with plugins, you really need to restart your Tmux server in order for it to show up. You can already see my Tmux looking a lot different. So the first one we have is the Tmux Session X. This one is just basically switching Tmux Session very easily by doing Control B capital O. That is the default. You can even rename the session by doing Control R. We're just going to say new session. With Control J and K, we can move up and down. And we can delete session by doing Option Backspace and that session is just gone. So that would be how I switch my sessions. So I wouldn't be using the default settings anymore. What I use is actually prefix O, not capital O. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set that up really quickly. With this plugin, you don't necessarily need to add this because we can just open up this plugin, type a new session name, press enter, and it will just create a new session for us. Tmux Resurrect. This is basically just persisting your Tmux sessions when your computer system restarts. And then Tmux Continuum just automatically saves sessions every 15 minutes. So you don't have to manually save it every single time by doing prefix and then control S to save the environment. The Capuchin theme is what I'm going to be using for this video. And these two plugins are just like the online status and the battery just to add that to our Tmux theme a little bit. Now we just make sure that Resurrect and Continuum is activated properly by adding these two lines. And then we're going to start adding our Capuchin theme you can go to the cat pushing GitHub and take a look at the things you can change. Next, we're going to configure the lines for our online status. And we're just going to go ahead and save this for now and then reload. I think it's better to always restart your Tmux when you're doing this to make sure that things are exactly how they look. If I just quit this now and just kill the server, go back in. Okay, our restoration is working and you can see that our Tmux looks totally different now. From this point onwards, it's going to be the custom stuff that I'm going to add for my Tmux configuration. And honestly, these custom themes are very hard to even start customizing. And it takes a lot of time because of the fact that you have to keep restarting it. And also the fact that it's not easy to set up at all. I also had a reference to this. I would say you use this reference as well if you want something similar. But if you want your themes to be simpler, you can just use some plugin and add that theme in here and then just use that. I just wasn't happy with the other themes so I decided to just find a custom one and go from there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste what I have in here and you can see that it's quite a lot of these random custom things that you have to mess around and see what does what. I wouldn't recommend you do this at all if you don't have to. So we're just gonna save, reload 
and now we can see the immediate changes to my tmux and we're also going to be restarting the tmux server just in case okay so that looks good so that's basically how my tmux is and you can go around like i said mess with these settings if you want to add some new icons do whatever you need to to make it feel right for you Everything you see in this configuration, you can find it at my GitHub at my .files repo in the tmux folder. You'll find everything you need in here. And the reason I don't use Zellige is because I ran into tmux first and I'm already used to it. You could already be using Zellige and just found out about tmux. If that's the case, then I wouldn't recommend you to switch to anything else because you're already probably used to that. Productivity isn't all about doing a lot or like doing every single thing. It's more of like getting used to things and mastering them and not switching it up every single time. I might try it out one day because I like to experiment with things. If you guys have used Selish before, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'm out.